Hey everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Queen's Wish. And I think we're actually going to enter High El Hovo today to, well, get that out of the way, but also, of course, because we might pick up some quests and, uh, yeah, let's just do it. The only reason I'm hesitant in the first place is because uh, there's going to be probably a lot of talking and I'm not always in the mood for that, but I think it should be fine. You enter High El Hovo, the core of the Ariel Woods. They have spent centuries weaving the trees and vines here into an enormous, stunningly beautiful tower. Oh, okay. I guess that's why it's called High El Hovo. It is an indoor forest, and the plants have been worked into living walls, partitioning the indoors into shops, barracks, and everything you would expect of a proper city. This is no trench town, though. The guards are regular Aria, but everyone else you see is blessed. Why not the guards? Oh. Also, I mean, that sounds absolutely amazing, of course. Um, not that this game's graphical engine can do it justice but yeah I can't help it but imagine what it would look like you know if this were a modern triple-a game hi uh, as you enter high El Hovo, you know two things first the guards are doing their best to pretend you aren't there much like many other Ariel they're always looking anywhere but where you are their enormous guard wolves on the other hand stare and snarl the second thing is the tower. It is an enormous wooden structure on the water to the south, looming over everything else in High El Hovo. That must be where the Watchers rule from. That would make sense. Guard walls, Ariel Blessed, okay. Huh. Okay, they actually... Oh, that's that's neat. I mean, I suppose the, the graphics do their best to represent this. I mean, obviously these trees are kind of tiny looking, but... Um, yeah, this is, it's neat that this it, place is actually fundamentally different from every other town in this game so far. It's a nice touch. Uh, this is an unusual shop. All the goods are in the fresh air, protected only by a thick woven canopy of vines and trees. Holes allow enough sunlight to pierce through the shop of the exquisite, pierce through to show off the exquisite, luxurious aerial craftsmanship. A blessed woman approaches with exactly the right balance of pride and deference. <laughs> Welcome to High El Hovo's trade post, Havenite. I'm Blessed Doiron. Do Doiron? Okay. Doiron? Who knows? Blessed Doiron. How can I help you? This is a nice shop. Thank you. I spent so much time here that it is easy to forget how beautiful it is. I love the fresh air and smell of moss. It really sets off well the elegant lethality of her spears. Right. Uh, do you ever get rained on? No, the vines are woven in such a way as to sluice all unwanted precipitation away. We of High El Hovo have, have had many centuries to get it right. Okay, fair enough. Tell me about your wares. The purpose of this shop is to show off the finest of the finest, the finest of the finest, our real goods. Our potions, our magic, our weapons, our enchanted garb. All visitors can come here and see the best in the known world. It is part of our duty. What is your duty? The Ariel have the finest culture and crafts. Our duty is to show what we have accomplished so that we can be a good example to all the worthy peoples of the world. Mm-hmm, sure. Um, can I trade with you? I mean, obviously no. I'll have to talk to the council first. I will trade with you as much as I can. I'm always willing to buy goods from other lands. There's always much we can learn. I would like to burn... To burn. <laughs> no, not, not quite yet. Uh, to buy something. Ah, well, you can look. However, until you have dealt with the watchers above to their satisfaction, I'm not allowed to sell to you. And unfortunately, I am not actually allowed to even look because of limitations of the engine. But that's fine. Can you craft anything for me? No, oh, we don't craft in Heil Hovo for a lot of good reasons. Too noisy, too smelly. Fear of fire. I think the closest master crafter is in Mercedes. Oh, fair enough. What do you have in here? Because I can look at this. Ariel Raymond's, Ariel, Ariel Pole Shard. Uh, yeah, whatever. Nothing we haven't seen before, I don't think. Or not particularly impressive either way. And Hobo Guards. Don't mind me just trudging through your beautiful garden houses. There is a magic circle in the middle of High El Hovo. You can sense power coming from the stones and the trees. Nobody is here right now. If a powerful spell is to be worked, this is where they will do it. Okay. Any more shops? Well, I guess not, really? No. Maybe there aren't as many people here 
to talk to her as I thought, but obviously there is going to be the council itself. Blessed Pagey, hello. You're surprised to find in this quiet corner of Heil Hobo an artist's studio. Really? Am I surprised? That seems exactly like the place for an artist's studio. Artist's studio. <clears throat> a young, highly intense woman is painting a picture of two bowls, two bowls, two bowls of food on the table. She covers the canvas when she sees you. Ah, from Haven. Come in, come in. I'm the elevated artist of High, El of High El Hobo, Blessed Pagey. I paint. The sculptors are not here. Too noisy. I can be here. You have been elevated? I was chosen by the Watchers. They think I can best make new forms of art. And that I can best show the world the superiority of the Ariel. It is a responsibility to destroy the old styles. I must bear it. Destroy the old styles. Okay, that seems pretty drastic. Is there a lot of competition to be elevated? Yes, of course. Murders have happened. I'm safe, though. None can be. None can yet replace me. I'll know it. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, what are the old styles? Mere representation. You see a thing and you make a painting that looks like it. So all the paintings, you, so all the paintings your mother and Delia buy, noted. <laughs> that has value, but others already do it. To be elevated is to always look for the new. What are you looking for? New paintings, new ways of seeing, unlike any ever ever done. Someone must always be looking for the new, yes? What if someone prefers the old styles? They can look at that. They can look at it. I'm not an art guard. I will not. Uh, I will put nobody in painting jail. Yeah, okay. Not that those are things, or that you could do that in the first place. All can make and look at whatever they want. They must only face the risk of being left behind. Uh huh. <laughs> Would I like to buy a painting? I, I mean, honestly, I'd rather hear more about what she intends to to replace the old style with, instead of painting things that you see. What what do you paint? I mean, I suppose. Um, expressionist style paintings rather than impressionist but what comes after that what at some point that's going to be the old style and that's going to have to be replaced by something i don't think this is particularly well thought out also how long has this been going on i mean what what came before the the current old style you know what did people paint before that not things not things in your mind i don't know <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of logic to it, and I'm just not seeing it. I'd like to buy a painting. Let's just pretend. No, not yet. We will decide how best to show the world the work of the Ariel. Once the correct pieces are selected, they may travel to be our, to be our diplomats to the world. Okay, can I see your work? She thinks about this. This is my decision to make. I decide yes. She pulls aside the cover of her most recent work. She's painting two bowls of food. The painting looks like a red and a yellow circle on a white background. Uh, would you see another? All right. She shows you a blank canvas. When she notes your confusion, she points to the lower corner. You see a small slash of gray paint. She sniffs. Would you, see, would you see yet another? Sure. It is a huge painting of a skull, bone white on a black on a black background. Uh, when you look closer, though, you realize that the skull is surrounded by many tiny figures, flowers, dancers, eyes, all painted in very dark gray paint on black, so that they are barely visible. These are three works I think have promise. I mean, the third one sounds intriguing. The first one... I guess there is a certain appeal to that kind of painting. Um, the second one, though, sounds a little bit uh, pretentious at best. I don't know. Um, what do you think, Prince of a Foreign Land? <laughs> Looks like trash to me. <laughs> Oof. Um, your work is uh, good? No, you know what? I honestly think that artistic exploration is an exciting. I don't know if I would say exciting, but um, definitely interesting and worthwhile. So, sure. She nods. We are so excited by the return of Haven. There is so much promise for us. The small folk have their worries, but the blessed know that we have so much to gain. Now, please excuse me. Inspiration strikes. She turns back to her work, ignoring you. Well, I mean... Art is art, right? Who's to judge it? You walk around the tower in the middle of Hyal Hovo, who, uh, which has its entrance annoyingly at the bottom, apparently, because the engine doesn't support really uh, having doors at the north end of buildings, but oh well. Um, 
The entrance must be to the south. The guards still ignore you as you pass, but blessed watch you from windows above. So far the Ariel haven't been hostile. You will have to be careful, though. Once you enter their tower, if they decide to murder you, you won't be able to stop them. Uh, excuse me? I beg to differ. They might decide to kill me, but I'm definitely going to try and stop them. And I have definitely killed lots of Ariel in the past, including Blessed and Spellcaster, so... Um, the first floor of the tower is a garden. Big surprise there. Showing off the floral, floral variety of the Ariel Woods. You have... Uh, you even see some of their thorny thicket plants in the corner. Do I? I guess there. Several plant workers tend to the garden. One imperious old man directs them. He is not hesitant about shouting at them if they make even the slightest mistake. Blessed Paydar, that would be you, I guess. The garden is tended by one of by one old plant worker. While everyone else in Hyalho has been cordial or just ignored you, this man regards you with instant contempt. I am blessed Paydar. Elevated plant worker of Heil Hobo, you are an invader of lesser perception. What do you want? I, I mean, I'd say maybe the most basic kind of respect towards another human being, but I guess that's asking a bit too much. What is a plant worker? We are the ones who listen to the trees and talk to them in return. We marshal them to feed us and protect our lands from barbarian invaders such as you. <laughs> Okay, the like you goes unsaid, yes. But, I mean, it doesn't need to be said. What do the trees tell you? They tell us where there is corruption, where the invaders are, where their peace is broken by those who would destroy the Ariel, like you. What do you tell the trees? We tell them where to walk, how to move, who to trap. What? Where to move, how to move, where to move, okay. What to consume. We discipline them when they misbehave, and we guide them into an impenetrable defense. Uh, like what happened in... Uh, what was that place called that I had to fight my way through? Hmm. How do they misbehave? Trees are slow, but they are willful. Magic is fast and full of chaos. Together, we sometimes have troubles in our woods, monsters and such. When this happens, we bless it solve the problem. We do this in our own time, in the right way, not fast and crude like the common folk demand. Your defenses are impenetrable? Yes. The only reason Haven soldiers have ever set foot into our lands is because we allow it. We are led by greed and we are led by weak by greed and weakness. <laughs> by weed and greatness? Wait no. Um <laughs> greed and weakness. Who will stand up and save the Ariel? He turns and walks away. You have to follow. Do I? I don't think I have to. You know what? Screw that guy. I think I've learned all I ever wanted and more. What's down here? Hmm, okay. Just some storage rooms, I guess. Oh, hello, Beatrice. You're not blessed. Are you even Ariel at all? You're surprised to find a sage hiding down here. Indeed. She's old, tired, and oddly not blessed. When you approach, she sighs. Heard you like to heard you like to poke around, Havenite. I'm Beatrice. Say what you want and go away. Oh, okay. Not blessed, but no less uh no less hostile than that guy above, I guess. Or, well, I suppose she might be a little bit less hostile, just not particularly friendly. Why are you hiding down here? It is the only place I can get silence. The blessed are always bothering me. Questions, requests, wanting genealogical research or other such madness. It's peaceful down here. What are you studying? I study the history of the Ariel. How we came to be this way. How we might change. Okay, I would like to learn more. It is the business of the Ariel, not you. Haven will end up choosing for us if I let you. We will decide who we truly are. Please leave me. Okay. An iron bar. Ooh, tempting. Quicksilver, not so much. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll see if we will end up having any more business with her at some point. This floor of the tower is a glorious feasting hall. The Ariel are already good good at food. Here they prepare some of the most delicious exotic meals in the known world. Food that would draw uh, draw raves even in your palace back home. Oh, really? I thought we had nothing but contempt for the... for the uh, super highly sophisticated culture that the, uh, the Ariel claim to have. But I guess there might be something to it after all. Hello, Chef Frank. 
When the people of Hyalhovo get hungry, they come here. One frenetically busy chef makes meals for them, assisted by a team of helpers and apprentices. Yet, although he has a dozen dishes on the fire, he makes time to, sp to speak with you. <clears throat> the Prince of Haven, honored, Iron Chef Frank, elevated by the watchers of Hyalhovo, and bearer of the duty. Hungry? Um, what are you making? So many dishes on the fire right now. Some traditional, some new classic recipes, some experiments. New classic? Hmm. Okay. All part of the duty of the Ariel. I'm quite good, I admit. That is why I was elevated. You're elevated? Sometimes. Uh, sometimes the watchers of Hyalhovo pick one who best fulfills the duty of the Ariel. We are brought here to perform our craft and advance it. Remaining the best in the world takes a lot of work. Uh, you have a lot of assistance. Of course. I must simultaneously advance the art and feed the city. Plus, I must teach the young. All parts must work together to practice and continue the work. Where do you get your ingredients? Mostly the nearby farms of the Ariel Woods. Our raw nature and magic produce a variety of fresh, delicious products, living and dead. With Haven's help, I will soon trade for other unique ingredients from the far lands of the known world. Aha, so that's another one who appreciates um, the Ariel opening up to the outside world. Um, you mentioned the duty of the Ariel, which we already heard about, but whatever. The Ariel are the peak of human culture, as everyone knows. We are not selfish, though. We want others to live as well as to live as well as us. Thus, we show them what is possible, and we help them improve within reason, of course. You think everyone can eat as well as you? Of course not. Few, if any, can match the food of the Ariel. So, what is the goal? I think everyone can eat better with more attention and more art. All should strive for this. Many lands are poor or torn by war, but the Ariel are not. Those unfortunate lands should decide to be more like the Ariel. When they improve enough, they won't be poor or afflicted by violence anymore. After all, we are not. I mean, I guess it's true. Um, in a way, at least. I would like something? Of course. You can try one of my new dishes, or you can sample our fine ales and wines. Uh, sure. Uh, I'll take something to eat. You brought a plate. A plate, a very unusual dish, unlike anything you ever saw in Haven. It's a plate of thin strips of raw meat with a tangy sauce. Frank explains that they are from the most tender parts of the face of the direwolf. Okay. You have <laughs> you leave fed but weirdly unsatisfied. It is completely unlike the food of Haven, even the fancy stuff. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I would like that particular <laughs> kind of meal. I don't know. I like to try new stuff, but wolf face sashimi sounds kind of weird. Especially since I'm pretty sure that, well, I, I don't know it from first-hand experience, but... Uh, like predator or carnivore meat, meat, meat is supposed to not be very tasty, and eating it raw, I don't know. But I guess these people have to know what they want to want to eat and have others eat. Uh, then show me your drink. Oh, you're given a metal cup of thick, syrupy wine flavored with an an herb you can't recognize. It is weird, not entirely pleasant, and makes you woozy. Uh, awesome. Thanks, I guess. I'm content. I'm so pleased. Be sure to return the moment you feel hungry. I know that I will have another experiment for you. Actually, do you? Oh, indeed. Um, it is a salad, of leaf a salad of leaves and twigs. The twigs are actually edible and they have a crunch to them. They are quite bitter. Huh. Wait, I can just... Order something else again. A plate of thin strips of raw meat. Oh. Leaves and twigs. Ah, it's a flan of egg, bacon essence, maple syrup, and salmon egg. Hmm. I mean, that doesn't sound bad necessarily. A dessert of whipped egg and cream flavored with an overpowering essence of mushrooms. That does sound weird. As a dessert? Hmm. I mean, if it's not. I guess if it weren't sweet, that... Maybe it isn't sweet, who knows? Sweet mushroom sounds a bit weird. A thick beef soup. There is some sort of organ meat in it. It has a powerful iron flavor. Mother doesn't like organ meat. Why does that matter? I mean, I don't like organ meat, honestly. Um, powerful iron flavor, so some kind of beef blood soup. Eh, sounds... 
like it would be an acquired taste at best. I think we probably have seen everything at this point. Yeah. Okay. There might also be more drinks, but you know, I think we have sampled quite enough for now. At last, you reach the Hall of the Watchers. It is beautiful, of course. You can take that for granted in the lands of the Ariel. There are patches of trees, bright light comes in through the windows, butterflies flap everywhere. The hall is beautiful, and the watchers are odd. Green, confused, waxy skin, the baffled look that comes from years of elixir drinking. Only one of them, an ancient woman in the center of the head table, seems to realize that you are here. Okay. Alright, so even though there are multiple watchers here, only one of them is actually someone to talk to. That makes things easier, for sure. Well then, you are ready, you say. Watcher Ablin, with her unique portrait. Very neat looking. At first, you think the woman in the middle of the head table might be a waxwork. Decades or centuries of elixir have made her eyes glassy and her skin have a strange glassy sheen. Then she leans forward and moves her face into what she remembers a smile to feel like. I am Watcher Ablin. I am twice blessed. First as blessed, next as a speaker. For Hyal Hovo. For the Ariel. I am Prince Atantu of Haven, as you are probably aware. Although, who knows? She nods slowly. It is noted. It will be written. You will now... She is interrupted by a similarly ancient, baffled watcher who shouts, A loud voice carries through the trees! All of the watchers immediately break out in a loud argument. What is going on? Nobody is listening. Some of the watchers are arguing. Others get up to look out the window. One appears to be chasing a butterfly. None of them are paying attention. Wow. Okay. I mean, if I needed any more confirmation that these people are not fit to rule anything, or let alone anyone, I guess now I have it. The conversation just ends. Uh, excuse me. Watcher Ablin tries to deal with you, but she is constantly distracted by the other watchers. I mean, is she actually trying to focus on me, or, and is it just the uh, the commotion that the others create that keeps her from having a conversation with me, or is she similarly absent-minded? I guess she must be to a to a degree. Anyway, they make objections, unexpected noises. They ask questions about unrelated matters, some of which make no sense. The watchers are still lost in chaos. Honestly, I'm gonna wait and watch for a while. The watchers keep arguing, wandering around, and quietly communing with the wildlife or napping. They change roles frequently. Sometimes one nods off and another jumps up with plenty to say. You wait. The chaos continues. Okay, let's keep watching. Oh, that's just the same uh, the same thing every single time. Excuse me. Watcher Avalon's head snaps around to you. You can't read her expression. It conveys a feeling that makes sense only to her. She slaps the table with her hand. The watchers grow silent and shuffle back to their, to their seats. So, Prince, you have come. How was your journey? Your people have repeatedly attempted to murder me. I mean... <laughs> it's true. I don't want to sound too complainy. Not that it would make any kind of difference. You know what? <laughs> no difficulties of note. That's also true. I mean, none of the... Of the, of the required roadblocks, I guess, were particularly difficult to overcome, but, you know. Your woods are dangerous. But I made my way. I managed. She nods. Yes, they are dangerous. We make them that way. They eat our enemies. Our foes nourish the thickets. But you are here. That is good. A long pause. Then she speaks very slowly. She knows that this is important and doesn't want any missteps. Why are you here? Well, I have come to speak with you, obviously. You have come far, across the ocean, across an ocean. You have been in danger. The watcher next to her starts to hum. She slaps him. He shuts up. You come to High Elhovo. Why? What do you want? I've been sent by Queen Sharon of Haven. Um, yeah, I mean, again, both options two and three are valid. I think these these people, if anyone, need a pretty firm hand. So uh, the Ariel have a treaty with Haven. You are our vessels. You left. We were vessels. Then you left, and you took your things with you. I do not see us as a vessel. Not at this moment, anyway. <laughs> that is reasonable, never mind. I mean, it is kind of reasonable, but... 
again, personally, I, I wouldn't want to have anything to do with forcing anything on these people. Just let them do their thing and, you know, um, and that would be that. But since this is the purpose of the game, you will be our vessel again. Which are able nods. The words are out. They are said. They are said. So many foolish arguments are settled now. The watch is none. We have clarity, and clarity helps us. Now we can tell you more about us, help you understand. Then we can negotiate and deal with unfinished matters. Okay. Uh, I want to know more about the watchers, I suppose. All regions of our woods have watchers. The longest drinkers of elixir, the wisest, the most attuned to the many layers. When an event happens, all watchers who can come here to decide, to see envoys like you. We rule the Ariel Woods, and we have responsibilities. Hmm. Tell me about Elixir. Quicksilver solution, charged with wisdom. It brings us long life and health and wisdom, and helps us to talk to the many layers of reality, higher and, higher and lower. Yeah, I definitely don't want any Elixir. What are your resp responsibilities? <clears throat> we have so many. We must watch all the layers of existence above and below us. We must speak to our woods to keep our people nourished and safe. We must remember all the old history. It is so much. Yet the regular folk complain. They moan that we don't do enough for them. Which you don't. They don't see how much we have to do. How we bend under the strain. You don't seem to do much to rule your land. You know what? I have absolutely no patience with, with their eccentricities. And I think they're just completely insane. There's no merit to, to this weird system there. They're having here. I mean, I'm surprised they even have any kind of working country with any kind of working economy. It seems to be working somehow, even though in reality I don't think it would. But, yeah, if I... I mean, I had some qualms maybe about changing the life of the other two vessels. But in this case, I don't think so. Yeah, you don't seem to do much to, your, to rule your land. This drives the Watchers into an instant fury. They all erupt at once, shouting, Ungrateful! Nobody understands us! We are so wise! We are good! What what we do is what the good do. What we do is what the good do? Okay. Watcher Ablin turns away from you to try to calm down the hall. The conversation ends. I mean, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna say... Uh, you know, something different just to just to please you. I hope it's possible to... to continue this conversation or this this quest line um, without having to. Anyway, uh, okay, I suppose that was only to learn about the Watchers and not the main negotiation. I have been to the Trench Towns. I sure have. The Watchers look at each other, not sure where this is leading. A few immediately lose interest and wander off. Ablin says, I suppose it was inevitable. Still, I am sorry. Sorry? They are Ariel and therefore part of our great story and superior culture, yet they are the least part of us. Better than the regular peasant, but dirty and coarse. Yeah, and you are not really doing anything to change that. I have a message from them. You carry a message from the trench folk? To us? The Watchers of High Elhovo? Really? I don't understand why you would do that. You are a Prince of Haven, so I suppose we... You are a Prince of Haven, so I suppose we must listen. I mean, I'm not going to specifically mention Istara, even though in a short while it's not going to make a difference, hopefully. Um, the trench towns feel like you feel you neglect them. Watcher Ablin truly doesn't know how to respond to this. Before she can open her mouth, a watcher by a window breaks into laughter. Others join him. Then Ablin herself starts to snicker, then chuckle, then laugh. You wait, but their episode of hilarity continues for some time. When you think they're about to run out of breath, they just laugh more. Eventually, you wander off. Looks like Astara has her answer. Yeah. I mean, she does, I suppose. This was kind of... Uh, this is pretty much a, the predictable outcome. I mean, not necessarily the fit of laughter, but obviously the, the fact that they wouldn't have a satisfying answer to the trench towns. That's exactly what Astara wanted to hear. The thing is, uh, how does anyone... How, how do the news leave this, this room? Is there anyone... Is there any kind of official way to communicate that, that to the general public? How will they ever ever know? How would that, you know, instill the rage that Istara hopes for? Anyway. Uh, let's negotiate, I guess. Just 
you know, for the sake of formality. Gladly. Several watchers open their mouths. Ablin silences, silences them with a wrathful glare. The Ariel, the Ariel are a superior people. All see it. It is hard for us to admit the rare times when we need aid. Yet we watchers have missed Haven. Why have you missed us? There are so many mundane details that must be dealt with. Brigands, forest monsters, blocked roads, lost mines, important to small folk, but less important than watching the many levels of existence. When Haven was here to keep the roads clear for merchants and such, things were easier. We did some we did some services. You helped us to do our duty. Um, how do we help you do your duty? The Ariel are a superior people. We have found a better way. We are not selfish. Our duty is to show ourselves to others so that we can be a good example. The more other people try to imitate us, the closer they will be to a perfect existence. Like yours. Gotcha. What services do you provide to us? Our quicksilver, our potions, our fine weapons and other goods. Your merchants love to come here and buy them. Our small folk love to sell them. We are valuable to you, Havenite. Even your mother told me told me so many years ago. Did she now? Um, so you will be our vessels and obey the old contract? A long, tense silence. Finally, Watcher Avelyn says, Yes, it will be as if nothing ever... As if nothing ever happened. Your armies help the Watchers. Our positions, uh, our potions sent to your people. Now the Watcher, now the Watcher actually looks nervous. Hmm. However, we do have one new requirement. What is that requirement? You must kneel to me, Prince. You must kneel and swear that the Ariel have the world's superior culture, better than all, including Haven. Sorry, what was that again? <laughs> Interesting that the game gives me only that one option there. I mean, not an option at all. Kneel and swear our superi superiority. You look at the other watchers. They all nod. Together, they came up with this mad idea. If your mother finds out that you knelt before a vassal, she will be utterly furious. Yeah, screw mother. She has nothing to do with that. Delia and Sutter won't be pleased either. Havenites are proud. <laughs> there are problems with that. Yeah, several. Um, you know what? I can't. I could do that, but I'm, I won't. Screw you people. Then go. Let your battalion dry up and wither away in our thicket. I have set our peace. I have set our peace. I have set our price. It will not change. Not ever. Go and think, Prince. Go and think. I'm done thinking about this, anyway. So, yeah. I don't know what I was expecting, but uh, I guess that's pretty much it. Now that that formality has been dealt with, I guess we can well return to Astara and talk to her. Claiming the Ariel Heil Hobo. What's the quest Heil Hobo? Actually, didn't even see that I got a new quest. Reach Heil Hobo. You found the Watchers. Their leader Ablin will negotiate with you. Well, in a way. Uh, reclaiming the Ariel. I suppose. Yeah, obviously, instead of siding with the Watchers, I'm going to side with the people of the Trench Towns. And, um, well, we'll see how that's going to go. Yeah, I guess first first thing I'm going to return to Istara and talk to her. That should advance things. I spoke to the council, to the High Council, as you requested. They mocked your idea. You described the meeting. As expected, Estara is furious. Really? Furious? Because she should have expected this, or she clearly is expected as much. Uh, she rants and rails for a while, but it is a gleeful anger. She looks ready to fight. Yes, they are so arrogant. They could not have done better. Now, now we can make them pay. Uh, how can the High Council pay for their arrogance? Go back to Mercedi. Talk to Lonius again. Soon he is sure to have heard of the meeting. Yeah, again, how would the news spread at all? No. I guess we'll just assume that they do somehow. Grab him now, while the anger is hot. The question you asked before, ask again. Um, you think... Yeah, what question exactly are you referring to? You can help us gain power if the Ariel become a vessel again. Ask if he will take the deal. Oh, the... Ask the question I asked him before. Okay, gotcha. You think he will change his mind? I don't know. 
I have lost track of what normal minds think. The elixir. The accursed elixir. Still, if this rejection doesn't get rid of the rest of his, of his hope, there is no chance. Yeah, I suppose. Okay. <laughs> well, up to Mercedes. Go to the right house right away this time. <clears throat> I'm here from Istara again. I have another message from her. There is a long silence. Lonius closes his eyes. <sighs> I knew this was coming. Fine. What does the madwoman say? I mean, madwoman maybe, but clearly not anywhere near as mad as the other, the other blessed rulers, especially the the high watchers. We can give you power in the Ariel Woods if you support Astara and Haven. He opens his eyes and looks up at you. He is furious. I didn't want power. Don't you understand? You have disrupted everything. Your presence humiliates the blessed. That is the only thing they can't stand. We will have to have Haven's protection now. Yeah, I mean, I thought I was going to tell him about their reaction to to the the problems of the trench towns. But I guess not. You'll have to have Haven's protection now. It's not... Inevitable. <laughs> I can always just leave. Uh, what? How are these even options? Obviously, at this point, I'm not going to support the Blessed. Is that? And and I don't, I don't know if this is meant as a threat. Because obviously, he he would. It seems like he would prefer me to support the Blessed in the first place. I'm not entirely sure how this is supposed to go, what the game intends by by these, by giving me these options here. I think I'm going to go with number one. This is correct. You tricked Astara. Now it is too late. No, I did not trick her. The blessed will need to be held in check by you. I have to go along with it to protect my people. Haven has won again. I have a message for Astara. What message do you have for Astara? Tell her that she wins. If she signs a treaty with you to give the trench towns power and weaken the blessed, I will support her. Curse her. She has my support. Now leave me. I have to plan, prepare. If I have to live in this new world, I need to get ready for it. Hmm. I mean... I don't know if there was another way to handle this, but... If I was not going to side with the Blessed, but the Trench Towns instead, I guess this was the only way. I'm not quite happy with how unhappy he is. And I don't like to think, or I like to think that I... Don't tr that I didn't trick anyone, and or that Istara was trying to trick anyone. I don't think. I didn't get the impression that this is a matter of, that she's she's in this for personal gain, for for power, but for rather for an earnest interest in making life better for the broad populace. You know. Anyway, Istara pours you more tea. Occasionally, her hands shake and her face twitches. Other times, she giggles oddly. Perhaps the effect of the elixir. Yeah, perhaps. Uh, I spoke to Lonius again. Estara laughs loud and long. So he wakes up at last. He has realized that Haven is here. Things have to change one way or another. Now, now we can act. Now we can provoke the enemy. That sounds ominous. It is dangerous for us all. Still, we need one more provocation. Lonius was correct. We need the High Council to look weak before the people will join us. We need people to join us to control the High Council. Um, yeah, okay. You want to take control of the High Council? Of course. That was always the goal. How could we give how could we give Haven what it wants without taking power ourselves? Yeah, no, that does make sense. Which means we must be on the Council. We can get allies if the High Council appears weak. Victory is close. I can give you what you want. First, though, the Council must be humiliated. Humiliate them? You must get them to challenge you, then get them to back down. This is the language the Ariel will understand. Show everyone how confused they are. Then Lonius and I will be able to gather allies. With Haven's help, we can gain power. Okay. I mean, uh, there's a certain logic to that, I suppose. How do I get them to challenge me? You've met them. You've seen how deluded and arrogant they are. Any insult or questioning of their authority should enrage them. What form will that challenge take? 
Hmm, they may say a few cutting insults. It's possible, but unlikely. If you do your job correctly, they will probably attack you. They will try to kill me personally? Oh, yes, I suggest that you don't let them. I don't like the sound of this. Because, yeah, that will... That would mean that I will be forced to fight back, and I don't really want to just slaughter them all. I guess that would be a way to force a change of leadership. Hmm. I, I can't blame you. The High Council is powerful. Yeah, no, that's not my concern here. That is why we never overthrew them. That is also why your resisting them will have such a strong effect. All we need now is to show that they are fallible. Fallible? Fallible? That they can be beaten. Good luck, Prince Atantu. If you succeed, I think I can get us both what we want. Hmm. Maybe I had a slightly wrong impression of her in the first place. I don't know. But I guess it's too late to back now. To back. Yeah, to back away now. Uh, huh. So, I guess next time we're gonna head back to the council. I wonder if I should get the remaining dungeons, the remaining two dungeons, out of the way before I do that. I mean, it's not like any locations became unavailable or or anything in the in the other vessels in the past, so it's probably fine. I can probably settle the uh, the vessel situation first and then take care of the remaining loose ends. But um, well, we'll see. Maybe I'm I'm still gonna keep this uh, keep the main quest for last, as I usually do. For now, we're going to head up to Fort Mist and rest, get the next report as well. Yep, still losing iron, but yeah, well, it's fine. As I said, we we can uh, just do some trading of resources if we absolutely need to, if we start to actually run out, but for now, it's not an immediate danger at all. Um, right, I wanted to just quickly check my inventory hasn't changed because we haven't actually done any adventuring this episode, that's right. So, um, yeah, for now I'm just going to... Would you please just let me pass, stupid soldiers? Yeah, for now I'm just going to end it here. Um, next time we're going to deal with either the Mind Warpers or try to free those prisoners. What was that all about again? Cottage prisoners. Um, yeah, either one. This seems like the minor endeavor between the two, so maybe I'm gonna try to get that out of the way quickly first before we head into this, what I can only assume is a pretty gonna be a pretty tough dungeon. Um, yeah, but uh, well, that's gonna be for next time. As always, I thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and I shall see you real soon. Bye bye.